Okay, so now we've broken um, both of these um, vectors into components. And now we can finally try to interpret them. So what interpretations can we get here? Well, here we have our velocities. The velocities tell us which way we're moving. So for example, horizontally, now we can see we're moving to the right. We can see that horizontally we're moving to the right because our horizontal uh, component was pointing to the right. And we can see that vertically we're moving up because our vertical component is pointing up. Here's the arrowhead up. So vertically, we're moving up. So that's the information that we got from this velocity vector. That was maybe kind of obvious just from the overall vector that we're moving right and up. But it's good to be able to see that from the components as well. Now, what information do we get from the acceleration vectors? Remember, the acceleration vectors don't tell us which way we're moving. They tell us whether we're speeding up, slowing down, or have constant speed. Well, let's see here. The horizontal acceleration is parallel to the horizontal velocity. Horizontal velocity is to the right, and horizontal acceleration is to the right. That means that we're speeding up horizontally. Our horizontal speed is increasing. Can you see that a sub x is pointing to the right, and v sub x is parallel, also pointing to the right? When those vectors are parallel, the horizontal speed is increasing. And how about vertically? Well, our vertical velocity is pointing up, but our vertical acceleration is pointing down. Here's this arrowhead pointing down, but the arrowhead on the vertical velocity is pointing up. So vertically, the acceleration and the velocity are anti-parallel. That means that vertically, we're slowing down. Our vertical speed is decreasing. Our vertical speed is decreasing. And now we've completely analyzed the object. It's moving to the right with an increasing horizontal speed, and it's also moving up with a decreasing vertical speed. You might have been able to see that this was moving up into the right without breaking the velocity into components. But I think you can see it's very helpful when you're interpreting the acceleration to break the acceleration into components. Uh, it would be hard to have understood what was happening to the speed without breaking the acceleration into components. And anyway, when we're solving quantitative problems, it's crucial to break both the velocity and the acceleration into components. So in these problems, you should definitely be trying to break both the velocity and the acceleration into components, because that's going to be a crucial skill for us. Okay, so we've learned here how to break things into components. Remember this trick is draw a right triangle that uses the overall vector as its hypotenuse. And then the horizontal and the vertical legs will give you the horizontal and vertical components. Remember that when you do that, you have to put arrows on the legs. You can see that if we hadn't put the arrows on these legs, we wouldn't know in which cases the acceleration was parallel to the velocity and in which cases the acceleration was anti-parallel. So this whole acceleration triangle would have been pretty much useless without the arrows on the legs. A lot of people get lazy and they don't put arrows on the legs of their components, but then their work is useless. Um, so make sure you put arrows not just on the overall vector, but also on the components. Something else that's important here is notice that, again, um, the overall vectors, in a sense, were not very helpful to us. There was not any straightforward way to compare these overall vectors directly. You can't get much information by just comparing overall vectors directly. Um, instead, what you have to do is compare their components. So this is something we really have to get into the habit of doing in physics. We can't compare overall vectors. We can only compare their components. And the basic reason for that is you can only compare vectors that are parallel or anti-parallel to each other. Um, you only can really get meaningful information by comparing vectors that are parallel or anti-parallel to each other. Um, but these overall vectors are neither parallel nor anti-parallel. This overall vector is kind of pointing northeast, and this is kind of uh, pointing, pointing southeast. Um, the overall vectors here are neither parallel nor anti-parallel, and there's no really straightforward way to compare them directly then. So don't try to work with the original overall vectors. Instead, break the vectors into components. I'll say that again. A lot of the time, students get lazy, and they try to work with the original overall vectors. But you can't really solve problems using the original overall vectors. Um, instead, you've got to pretty much always break the vectors into components. Only when you've broken the vectors into components can you start solving problems. So um, a little bit earlier in the videos, I was giving you a set of problems where I told you the components. I was telling you v sub x and v sub y. And you could see how easy it was then um, to analyze the motion of the object. When I just told you um, the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity and the acceleration, it was very straightforward to analyze the motion of the object. 
Now, in this problem, I didn't directly tell you the horizontal and vertical components. I gave you the overall vectors. And you can see the overall vectors were, were kind of not as convenient. Um, when I give you the overall vectors, the first thing you have to do is convert those into components. Only when you have the components do you have something that's convenient to work with. So again, overall vectors are not convenient to work with. Instead, we have to break things down into components. Well, here's another similar problem. Try to do this problem the same way that we did the previous one. Um, try to use the techniques that we've learned to eventually write down everything we can about this object. Remember that both of these vectors refer to the same object. Well, I hope you paused the video and did that on paper. All right, now what would be the naive thing to do? The naive thing would be to try to just work with the overall vectors. But we're sophisticated physics students. We know that overall vectors are not really very helpful. Uh, instead, if we're given the overall vectors, the first thing we have to do is break them into components. How do we break them into components? Uh, we have to draw a right triangle where the overall vector is the hypotenuse. Here's a right triangle where the overall velocity vector is the hypotenuse. Uh, then the vertical here would be v sub y and the horizontal would be v sub x. Now, so far, this is useless. This is useless unless I put arrows on the components. Well, horizontally, you can see that horizontally, the overall vector is pointing to the right. So the horizontal component should also be pointing to the right. And vertically, I hope you can see that the overall vector is kind of vertically pointing down. So vertically, um, this leg should also be pointing down. All right, now we've broken this vector into components and we're ready to do the same thing for the acceleration. Again, we have to draw a right triangle that has the overall acceleration as its hypotenuse. I'm not going to keep drawing this little square here for a right angle because that might obscure the arrows that I need to draw. But this is supposed to be a right triangle. Uh, and we can label a sub y and a sub x. It's always a good idea to label as much as you can in any picture you're drawing. This is a, the overall vector. This is a sub x, the x component. And this is a sub y, the, hor uh, the vertical component. Remember that this can be pronounced a sub x. The x is the subscript. And a sub y, the y is the subscript. All right. Well, so far, this is useless. We've got to put some arrows in. Well, I think you can see that the overall vector is pointing up and to the right. Can you see that the overall vector, a, is pointing up and to the right? So our vertical component should be pointing up, and our horizontal component should be pointing to the right. Now that we have the components, it should be really straightforward to interpret the motion of this object. The velocities tell us which way we're moving. The horizontal velocity is to the right, so we're moving right. And the vertical velocity is down, so we're moving down. That's what the velocities tell us. And the accelerations tell us whether we're speeding up, slowing down, or have constant speed. Well, the um, x acceleration is parallel to the x velocity. They're both pointing to the right. So our horizontal speed is increasing. And our vertical acceleration is anti-parallel to our vertical velocity. Our vertical acceleration is up, but our vertical velocity is down, anti-parallel, so our vertical speed must be decreasing. And I guess now we're done. We've analyzed uh, completely the motion of the object. This object is moving to the right with increasing speed, and it's moving down with a decreasing vertical speed. So again, when you're given overall vectors, those are not really very helpful. When you're given overall vectors, you have to break those into components before you can have something you can use. How do we break the vector into components? By drawing a right triangle that has the overall vector as its hypotenuse. Um, let's redraw this velocity vector here. Here's that velocity vector again. One thing that you might have noticed is that there's really two different triangles you can draw on any vector. Here's one triangle we could draw on this vector, but we could also have drawn a right triangle up here. 
if you'd wanted to, you could have drawn this right triangle. This is a right triangle that's above the overall vector, and here's a right triangle that's below. Um, and then again, this overall vector is pointing down and to the right. So the components would be pointing to the right and down. And this would be v sub x, and this would be v sub y. But you can see it doesn't matter which one you do. It doesn't matter which one you do because we got the same results either way. Uh, when the right triangle was below the overall vector, we got that the horizontal was pointing to the right, but over here the horizontal is still pointing to the right. And in this triangle, the vertical is pointing down, and here the vertical is also pointing down. Um, so which right triangle should you draw? Whichever you like. Anytime you're breaking something into components, you have to use the overall vector as the hypotenuse. Um, but you can either draw a right triangle underneath that hypotenuse or above the hypotenuse. You should just draw whichever one is convenient for the problem that you're working on. I think this type of triangle underneath the hypotenuse is maybe a little bit more intuitive. Um, but you can draw whichever right triangle feels convenient on the problem that you're working on. So again, it doesn't matter whether you draw this right triangle or this right triangle. They should both give you the same answer.